Hello, this is Wes at Bad Seed Games, and we're going to be picking up on our camera tutorial series. Now, previously, we had set up the frozen point camera trigger and the targeted point camera trigger. And today, we're going to be going over a teleporting system. The reason why it's included in this series is that in order to do a teleporting system, you will need to manipulate the camera just a little bit. So let's get started. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, one of our trigger points. We're going to clone it and rename it. and place it and scale it. Now don't forget to change the tag. You can change it to a custom tag like I've added here or we can leave it untagged. And let's remove the old finite state machine. Now the way we have it set up right now, the collider is pretty much at the same size. So if the player just brushes up against it enough to trigger, that will fire off the teleporting script. But we want to make it so that if the player wants to teleport, they have to make an effort and actually step onto the teleport pad. So the best way of doing that is just take the radius of the capsule collider that's currently on it and scale it down just a bit. This way, the player will have to make a deliberate effort to teleport. And let's change the color just to make it different. All right, so now that we've got this set up, let's duplicate it. Rename it to Teleporter 2. And move it over. OK, now to work with the teleporter, uh, a teleporter system basically needs two p pieces of information. The point or the object that it's going to teleport it to, and the object that it's going to teleport. So let's set up two variables after we set up a new finite state machine called teleporter. And these are going to be game object variables for this tutorial. The first one's going to be player, since we're going to be manipulating the player, and next teleporter. Now for the next teleporter, for convenience, expose the variable to the inspector so that when you want to set it up you can just drag the destination right in there. So instead of having to go into the finite state machine system and dig your way into the variables. This just adds a little bit more extra convenience. All right. Let's rename this idle. Okay. Now since it's working with trigger p the triggers, let's add in a trigger event in the physics subsection. And let's give it a transition, a system event, trigger enter, and set the event to fire. Now we want it to collide with player only and store the collider that it's colliding with in player variable. It's wired up to the next state, name the next state teleport, since this is going to be where all the heavy lifting occurs. Okay. Now the variables that we're going to be using, or the actions that we're going to be using, are the get position and the set position. The get position is going to be accessing a specific game object, and that's going to be the next teleporter in line. And the setting position is going to be using it's not a specific game object, but it's going to be the player. This is good, but we need to extract that data and store it so we can transfer it between these two actions. So let's go back into the variables and add in a location variable. This will be a vector 3. And let's wire it up. So the vector, location, and location. All right, so once that's finished, let's go back here. And let's give it a test. Okay, so it seems that it has teleported, but as you can see, it's teleported us with the player halfway through the the uh, floor, and as such, he's falling right through. The reason why it does this is that in a game, the vector, the uh, the the vertices are what control the location of the the polygons. But there's one more piece of information, and that's called the normal. The normal is basically the direction that the polygon points so that the computer knows how to render it. And since the bounding box in this one is working on a box collider, 
it also uses the same vector information to determine what direction to interact with objects. Now since we're teleporting midway through, think of it like you're, if you were to be teleported halfway through the surface of a one of those hollow chocolate Easter eggs, if you were to teleport through, your feet would pull you down through it. And since the normals are pointing outwards, it doesn't necessarily know to stop you when you hit the bottom edge. So let's set up a system to adjust for that. So we're going to declare a new float variable, and let's call this elevation overdrive. And the way that we're going to work on this is that the way that the position, the get position and set position work, it will store the vector as a variable, a vector3 variable, but you'll also notice that the x, y, and z axes are still there. What this means is that you, in the get position, you can extract any of these as well as the vector, but in the set position, the vector th will be the location that we send it to, but if there is anything in these slots, it will overwrite the appropriate axes with the new value. So let's, since we're working with the y axis, which is up, let's take the elevation overdrive from the get position and place it into the y position of the set. And let's do a little bit of math. Really simple, really easy. Since it's a float variable, in the math subsection, let's add in the float add, put it between the two, take the elevation overdrive, and let's add in two. So in essence, it's going to take the value, add two to it, and then overwrite this location. Let's test it out. All right. So it seems the teleporting system is working, but as you're noticing with the camera, it's not it's uh, moving towards the player instead of teleporting with the player. So let's fix that. Okay. All right, so let's go into the camera matrix, into the movement. Let's create a new state. Let's call this teleport. Let's give it a global transition and let's call this one teleport. When it's finished, go back to idle. Now setting up the teleport is real easy. Since much like the um, teleporting of the player in the teleport one, we're going to be using the position actions of get and set. And the position that we want to get is going to be a specific game object. It's going to be the player. And let's store this in our location variable. And the set position, we're going to be using itself and moving it to the new location. Okay, so now that we've set up the action in the camera, let's call it in our teleporting script. So let's add a new state. And let's call this one camera action. This one's quite simple. We're just going to call an event or send an event in the state machine subsection. And it's going to be a game object, specific game object, and it will be camera matrix. Let's call teleport. And let's give this one a shot. OK, so we're teleporting. We're also teleporting the camera. And this is pretty good. So let's copy the script over to the next one. All we have to do with teleport one highlighted, right click and copy finite state machine, go to teleport two and paste it. All right, so let's give this a shot and see what happens. And it's working one way, it's working the other way but we forgot to declare the variable in teleporter2 to tell it to transport to teleporter1. So let's drag that in. Let's try it. And it's working. Now there is one thing that I have come across that I'm going to adjust these values accordingly.
and that sometimes when we teleport into an object, if we're moving and we're intersecting with the collider that we're entering in, since this is an idle, it's just saying, hey, I'm colliding with it now, so I'm going to fire the action. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a cooldown. Now, if you have your the radius or the size of your collider set small enough, the initial momentum of your player as they move should give them just enough of a boost. But let's be proactive in this. So what we're going to do is in Teleporter 1, we're going to add a new action, a new state, a finished transition, move it over. Let's call this one Received. And this is the action that you can call if you want to add in any snazzy particle effects or sounds or anything else like that. Let's give it a global transition of teleport. Now what are we going to do in this? Well, let's give it a wait action in the time subsection just so that it has a one second cooldown. This should be enough to get the player to exit, or if they stop and they don't move, it won't register. Okay, now that we've got that in here, what we're going to add in here is we're going to copy the send event that we have in camera action, and we're going to place it at the bottom of the stack in the teleport action. And in the specify game object, instead of the camera matrix, we're going to click it to the next teleporter and send teleport. So now that we have that set up, let's copy this on teleport 1, paste it in teleport 2, and let's do the same here. Let's give it a quick little test. All right, we're teleporting, and as you can see, it's giving it a chance to cool down. And as I said before, if you wanted to add it in some snazzy particle effects or any sound effects, you can add it into this action here. All right, now there is one more thing that I do have to mention. Let's go back into the player and look at the camera trigger action and see what happens when we're going through. It seems to be triggering our camera trigger. So let's address that. Now the first thing that I mentioned first thing that I think is happening is that the trigger enter, since that is a hard-coded system event that's saying, hey, a trigger has, something has triggered this, regardless of the tag. Now, I'm not sure if that's intentional or if that's just a byproduct, but let's see about addressing that. Now, there are two ways. The first could be that for all of the trigger enters that you use, you can declare your own system of, your own event, and since it is not a hard-coded system event, it will behave only in the ways that you tell it to. But to go back and change all that would take a little bit of time, so let's pop in a workaround. Let's add in a new state, and let's call this one tag compare. Now doing this will also help you for other future endeavors too, if you wanted to collide with objects and compare the tags and everything else like that. So, the action we're going to be using is game object compare tag in the logic subsection and the com tag that we're going to compare it with is trigger the tag that we want since this is acting only on the camera triggers we only want it to filter them go through the main camera and the way this will work is it will take the information and it will send a true or false result depending on whether or not the conditions have been met so let's add in the states that we want to use. Let's add in return. Let's add in a new one, so continue. So 
So if the tag results in false, we want it to return. If it results in true, we want it to continue. And let's wire it up appropriately. And let's make sure that once we've entered, we go into this statement. And let's give it a test just to make sure that it is behaving the way that we want it to. And as you can see, when we collide with the trigger, it is recognizing that the teleporters are not currently tagged, or they are not tagged as cameras. So as such, it's then going to just boot it back to the idle and then ignore it. Alright. So at this point, these teleporters have been set up and that's it for this video. In the next video we're going to be continuing on, but until then, if you like this video, feel free to comment and rate it however you like, and if you feel so inclined, please subscribe. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you later. Bye.